more and more people are developing cataracts as they age. So typically what a person will do is uh, they may get surgery. Well, sometimes there are complications to that surgery. It's not a, a complication-free or side effect-free surgical procedure. I mean, in one study, 42% uh, of people who get cataracts develop dry eyes. 20% uh, uh, get the droopy eyelid. And there's other complications like floaters. So personally, I would try more of a natural route first. Since they have very little side effects, people will say, well, where's the scientific studies? Um, there's no studies that validate using this natural remedy, which basically costs pennies that can potentially help you. There's not a lot of science-based evidence to show that that's going to be effective. Well, guess what? I have news for you. There won't be. Who's going to invest the thousands or, or tens of thousands or even millions of dollars on studies that involve natural remedies? Uh, it's not going to happen. You can't patent these things. Instead, why don't we take a look at the mechanism of what causes a cloudy lens, which is a cataract, and then use some type of natural remedy that makes sense, that really has very minimal downsides. Compare two drugs in surgery. The first thing you should know about the eye is this. It's one of those uh, tissues that is highly affected by blood sugars. If your blood sugars are high, uh, the eye is very vulnerable to high sugars because when the sugar is high, it creates a tremendous amount of oxidation or oxidative stress. And so that is the one thing that we know about cataracts. And you can think of oxidative stress as something rusting out. So let's say, for example, you have your car and it has rust spots because of all the salt on the roads, whatever. If you're raised in some place like Wisconsin, which gets really cold, and so we have to put a lot of the salt on the road to melt the snow. It can also create chemical reactions with the metal in your car and it can actually rust out. The same thing happening with the eyes in relationship to diabetes and prediabetes and just having a high carb diet. You get this chemical reaction that creates a lot of damage, especially as we age. Because of this, our bodies produce something called endogenous antioxidants. Those are antioxidants that our body makes to protect against all this oxidation and free radical damage. As we age, we make less of those antioxidants. And also, if our diet is not right or we consume a bit too many carbs, things can definitely go south uh, in the area of vision and eyes, including age-related macular degeneration and difficulty seeing at night. Now, we can tap into Mother Nature, uh, into various plants, to use some of their compounds that they have developed for eons of time in the area of plant pigments, those pigments that make up certain colors. And these pigments are very potent antioxidants. They have anti-inflammatory properties, and they can help counter the effects of this oxidative stress, especially in the lens of the eye. And the two categories of these pigments that I want to mention are one, carotenoids, okay, which include like beta carotene, which is the precursor for vitamin A. Uh, it's not the active form. It has to be converted into vitamin A. Only animal products um, have the active form. And then you have also other types of carotenoids called uh, lutein and zeaxanthin, which are more known for the age-related uh, macular degeneration. And so the color of carotenoids would be like the, the yellow, the orange, the red, the purple vegetables. And even you find these in egg yolks, which are yellow. But you also find these in grass-fed meat as well, which is interesting simply because cows eat grass, which has an abundant supply of carotenoids. But you're not going to nearly find the quantities in like grain-fed beef, that the conventional beef that you would get at the grocery store. Same thing with uh, eggs. Um, you know, like if you get a pasture-raised organic chicken eggs, uh, much higher carotenoids. Now, it is true that conventional eggs do have these carotenoids, but there's a dirty little secret that they can give these chickens um, synthetic pigments because they're confined to huge barns and are fed uh, grains that have a very little pigment left. But there's another category of pigments that I'm going to uh, focus in on, and that's called anthocyanins. And so the color of these anthocyanins would be like the red, the purple, and the blue. 
And this pigment has quite an effect on your eyes, especially if there's oxidative stress. And it may help reduce the risk of cataracts and potentially even reverse cataracts if you catch it early enough. So this is the, like the active compound in bilberry. It can help recycle uh, something called rhodopsin, which actually can help you see in the dark. It can also reduce the uh, risk of age-related macular degeneration. It can relax the ciliary muscle that is connected to the lens that is usually strained when you're doing a lot of computer work or reading for a long period of time. So it can help take the strain out of the eye. And it has been known to help with cataracts. And a lot of other plants are also loaded with anthocyanins as well. So we have the bilberry, we have the blueberry, we have the blackberry, we even have red cabbage. And by the way, as a side note, uh, the red cabbage sprouts are way higher in this anthocyanins than adult cabbage. But out of all the plants, the chokeberry is the highest. Now, the remedy that I'm going to recommend to help potentially decrease the risk of cataracts is going to be a shake. It's going to be composed of berries as well as kefir because kefir also has some interesting things in it that can also help reduce the risk of cataracts, and one being dietary calcium. There's definitely this association between getting enough calcium from dairy and having less cataracts. Then you also have all the probiotics in kefir, which, by the way, is way more than yogurt. And there's even some interesting studies on yogurt helping with cataracts. Well, kefir is much stronger than yogurt. Kefir also can help uh, with other things like uh, infections in the eye, like pink eye. And anytime you're doing kefir, I highly recommend that you get the unsweetened version of kefir. Get the whole milk kefir, not the low fat. And make sure the kefir is from grass-fed animals, whether it's goat, sheep, or cow. So you're simply going to mix one cup of berries with one cup of kefir, and you'll blend it up and you'll drink it down. Now, sometimes the kefir is pretty thick. So in that case, you might have to add a little bit of water to thin it out, or you can just consume it with a spoon. Now, the question is, what kind of berries should you use? You can really just use any of the berries because they're all pretty high in anthocyanins. And what you'll do is you just take a cup of that, mix it with the kefir, blend it up, and consume that once a day. Combination of this uh, high quality kefir with this anthocyanin rich berry mix is going to produce a really cool effect on your eyes. And not just for the lens, but for the macula, which is the back part of the eye, and the other tissues. It can help counter some of the complications of all this oxidative stress. Now, parallel with this, I would definitely make sure that your diet is very low in sucrose, fructose. And I would not actually recommend consuming milk, okay, because that also has lactose in it as well. But when you have a fermented milk product, that's going to be a lot better. Now, there's some other things that you can do, okay? There's a nutritional remedy called NAC in a drop form that you can use on your eyes. And the NAC remedy I'm going to recommend is kind of confusing because there's two types of NAC out there. One is n acetyl carnosine, and that's the one that you want. You don't want to get the n acetyl cysteine, okay? Now, that's good for other things like addictions, especially a fatty liver, but the one for the eye, n acetyl carnosine, is very specific as an antioxidant to help reduce cataracts. Now, the carnosine that acts as an antioxidant can't really penetrate the surface of the eye. And that's why this other compound is added to carnosine, the n acetyl part of this compound that allows it to penetrate into the first chamber of the eye. And that's where the lens is so it can do its work. So these NAC drops are another thing you can add to the protocol. I would also recommend consuming eggs, especially the egg yolks. And make sure that they're uh, runny as well because egg yolks are just loaded with carotenoids, which is good for the eye as well as anthocyanins, as well as something else called choline. And choline has some additional cool effects to counter dry eyes. Now, let's say, for example, you already had the cataracts, okay? And you have complications. Is there anything that can be done for that? And the answer is potentially yes. 
There's another product that you can get called Oculotrophin PMG. It's from a, a company called Santa Process. I'm not affiliated with that company, um, but that's something I used to use in practice for anything related to post-surgical in the eye or injury to the eye. So if you've scratched your eye, if you had some type of eye damage, that's a really good product to help you. Now, there's some other things you should know that go beyond just this remedy for cataracts. And I think you really like what I have to add about cataracts in this video right here.